On Monday, 22nd of April 2024, the British Parliament approved a controversial bill that would send migrants or asylum seekers who arrived on British shores illegally to Rwanda, a country in East Africa, and forbidden to ever return to the UK. According to the sponsor of the bill, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, the Rwanda bill, as it is called, was introduced to deter vulnerable migrants from making perilous crossings and break the business model of the criminal gangs who exploit them. Now, under this so-called Safety of Rwanda bill, anyone who arrived illegally in Britain after Janvers 1, 2022, meaning asylum seekers who came without authorization from another safe country, essentially those who arrived by dinghy via the English Channel, will be sent to the Rwandan capital of Kigali, where they will either be granted asylum and resettled in Rwanda, or be sent to a third country. According to the BBC, about 52,000 people meet this criterion in Britain, which is not surprising given that just this year alone, more than 6,000 people packed in small boats have migrated to Britain via the English Channel. Currently, the bill awaits the final stage of royal assent to be given by King Charles III to make it an official law. However, no timeline has been stated for when this royal assent will be given or if it will ever be given because two years ago when the bill was first proposed, the king reportedly criticized the bill, calling it appalling. But Prime Minister Sunka feels confident that the bill will become official, and he even went ahead to state that the first flights will depart in 10 to 12 weeks, with multiple flights occurring each month. The question is, why is the Rwanda bill controversial and why did the UK decide to send migrants, not just African migrants, to Rwanda? According to official data, the number of migrants that arrived in the UK on small boats rose from 299 in 2018 to 45,774 in 2022. Hence, the local asylum programs were underfunded and overwhelmed. The British government had to resort to housing migrants in hotels where they became trapped and unable to work until their claims were processed. And according to BBC News, these hotels cost the government around £8 million every day to rent. So, in response to this situation, former Prime Minister Boris Johnson first introduced the Rwanda Bill in April 2022, but it was blocked by the European Court of Human Rights two months later. After Boris stepped down as Prime Minister and Rishi stepped in, Prime Minister Rishi took up the Rwanda Plan and vowed to make it a reality. However, the Rwanda Plan was met with several hurdles mostly from human rights organizations, advocates for migrants, opposition politicians, and refugee groups who deemed the plan unethical and unworkable. In November 2023, the UK Supreme Court ruled that the Rwanda plan was unlawful because migrants sent to Rwanda faced the risk of being sent to their countries of origin where they could face harm, which is in violation of the principle of non-refoulement, according to Article 3 of the European Convention on Human Rights under the Refugee Convention. Following this ruling, the British government proposed a new bill in conjunction with a new treaty with Rwanda called the Adoption of the Safety of Rwanda Bill, which declared that Rwanda is a safe place for asylum seekers. However, despite the new bill, the British House of Lords criticized the bill as inadequate and demanded amendments, including a requirement that Rwanda could not be treated as safe until an independent monitoring body found it to be true. They also wanted an exemption for agents, allies, and employees of the UK overseas, including Afghans who fought alongside the British Armed Forces, from being removed. But the House of Lords wasn't the only group to oppose the new bill. Human rights advocates have argued that the bill is unlawful and inhumane. Critics of the government's policy refuse to be drawn on their next move. James Wilson, the director of Detention Action, which campaigns against human rights abuses in the immigration system, urged the public to look past the political stalemate and remember what is at stake. In March 2024, the UN Human Rights Committee called on the UK to drop the controversial plan as it discriminates against migrants and seeks to limit access to rights for asylum seekers, refugees and migrants. However, despite these oppositions, the House of Lords eventually gave way and let the bill pass without any formal changes or amendments. The final legislation, which was passed on Monday, 22nd of April, orders the court to ignore parts of the Human Rights Act 
and other UK and international rules, such as the Refugee Convention, that would also block the deportations to Rwanda. In preparation for the bill's approval into law, the government has already chartered planes for deportation flights, increased detention space, hired more immigration caseworkers, and freed up court space to handle appeals. The plan has also been gaining momentum. Last week, it was reported that the UK entered into negotiations with four more countries, including two African ones, to which it could send illegal migrants, according to leaked documents. These countries include Ivory Coast, Botswana, Costa Rica, and Armenia. Several African countries, including Cape Verde, Senegal, Tanzania, Togo, Angola, and Sierra Leone, were placed on a reserve list to be used in case an agreement could not be reached with other countries. So what does Rwanda think about all this? Are they ready to receive 52,000 asylum seekers? And what do Rwandans think about 52,000 migrants coming into their country? The Rwanda government under the presidency of President Kagame has earmarked two sites to host asylum seekers expected to be sent from the United Kingdom, who never had any plans to live in Rwanda. One of the locations that have been prepared for the migrants is Hope Hostel in northern Kigali. According to its managing director, Ismael Bakina, the hostel has 50 double rooms, which can host up to 100 guests. Initially, the hostel had a different purpose. Until two years ago, Hope Hostel housed survivors of the 1994 genocide, which killed almost a million people, mostly minority ethnic Tutsis. But after former UK Home Secretary Preeti Patel visited the premises on a tightly controlled tour in 2022, the survivors were evacuated without housing alternatives. Currently, the hostel sits empty, awaiting the political process in the UK to reach a conclusion. The other location prepared for the migrants is the Buiza Riverside Estate in southern Kigali, a deserted development estate built with the help of the government in Kigali to provide affordable housing to Rwandans. Together with Hope Hostel, both locations could house an estimated 500 people. However, concerns have been raised that the influx of migrants would put pressure on Rwanda's economy, which is already battling with high unemployment and a housing crisis caused by an increasing population. Thousands of people were left homeless after the government demolished informal housing in Kigali in 2019, offering only about $100 per person for temporary relocation to those who owned the property they were occupying at the time of the demolition. It is estimated that by 2050, the shortage of affordable housing will double as the city's population increases and the government fails to achieve its housing development goals. So, why did the Rwandan government accept this deal despite the concerns? The answer is money. As part of the deal, the UK has provided Rwanda with an initial 220 million pounds to take in asylum seekers for five years and has committed 370 million pounds over the next five years, regardless of how many people are sent to Rwanda. And if the law eventually passes, each asylum seeker would cost UK taxpayers about 1.8 million pounds. No doubt the money provided by the UK will be beneficial to the Rwanda economy. However, the concerns of unemployment and the housing crisis are valid. But what do Rwandans think about the Rwanda plan? Speaking to Rwandans in the nearby area, reports reveal that Rwandans were cautious to discuss the deal. Rights organizations have frequently denounced Rwanda's restrictive political atmosphere and limits on freedom of expression. However, Rwandans who did express their opinions did so anonymously, and some provided a more impartial viewpoint. According to one 35-year-old woman named Dativ, the Rwanda plan sounded like a great idea because money would come into Rwanda and asylum seekers would bring more employees into the service sector as the economy relies mainly on services, tourism, and agriculture. Another 45-year-old man who works as a taxi driver in the same neighborhood and refused to give his name said it could go both ways. According to him, Rwandans could have more work, but the relocated asylum seekers could also be competing with locals for job opportunities. However, despite the fact that the UK and Rwanda are getting benefits from this deal, it doesn't change the fact that it's the migrants who are getting the bad end of the deal. The migrants choose to go to the UK and not Rwanda, and the UN obliges the UK to accept them. However, this plan sends them to Rwanda without giving them any choice or hearing their case. 
According to a Rwanda official, Rwanda welcomes refugees, but only if they want to be here, not if they're forced to come here. That is why the deal is illegal, and it's against the dignity of the refugees and our people. What do you think of the Rwanda plan? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.